Okay, I've gotten a few inquiries and questions about some of the camera design diagrams we've done in the past. So I thought I'd show you the workflow that I use and the tools I use for doing these layouts. Most of this starts with uh, finding the property that we want to do a design for. In this case, I'll use uh, Video IQ's building as an example here. So we just type in the address into Google Maps. And here we go. Uh, do a little bit of a zoom in here to get better detail. Now much of this, uh, as you'll see as we go through this, uh, much of this relies on us having some semi-accurate calculations for the, uh, uh, for the design. So in this case, I've got this tool that if you use, uh, if you use Google Maps and you have an account, uh, there's this distance measurement tool option. If you enable that, what this allows you to do, you'll get this little ruler icon and you can uh, pick two points on a diagram and measure them. So in this case, I'm going to just measure across the top of the building here to get a rough scale. So this shows me uh, this part of the building is about 309 feet long, and you'll see where that comes into play next. So clear this out, and I'm going to do uh, Control Command Shift 4 on my Mac here to grab a little bit of a screenshot like this. Actually, maybe I'll do a little wider area so we get more of the parking lots. All right, so I've got a screenshot, minimize Chrome, and the tool I use is called OmniGraphle Professional. This is basically like Visio for the Mac. Uh, so I'm going to open up OmniGraphle here, and I'm going to go ahead, make a new diagram. I'm going to paste in that screenshot we just took. And so the first thing we want to do is set the scale for our drawing. The way I do this here is uh, I'm going to lock the image because we don't want to edit that. And uh, come over here. OmniGraphle has this nice little uh, tool that lets you draw a line and measure it. So, all right, so I've got a line here that's basically, call it almost six inches long. So in this case, uh, six inches equals 309 feet for whatever scale we ended up with here. So if I divide 309 by six, it tells me one foot is going to be about 51 and a half feet. So come back here to OmniGraphle, set the unit scale, 51 and a half feet. And now we see our line that we drew across here. It's 307, almost 308 feet. Uh, for what we're doing, this is going to be close enough. So delete that line to get it out of the way. Now, as we're doing camera layout, some of the important things uh, to think about are minimum and maximum field of view with recommendations or calculations for the cameras. Uh, our D1 cameras and encoders, the maximum far end field of view width can be 178 feet. And of course, that's for you know best possible lighting, best conditions. Typically, when we're doing camera layout and designs, I usually work with a field of view width right around 130 feet. This gives us, uh, by narrowing the field of view, gives us a little better sensitivity. And also, since we can never fully install things perfectly to the diagram, uh, gives the installers on site a little bit of wiggle room to work with on the camera layouts. On the HD cameras, maximum width is 534 feet. Uh, and for typical field of view widths, I usually like to stick with about 330 feet on those cameras. And here from the little diagrams, you see representation of a 3 and 9 millimeter lens on the D1s and a 3 and 8 millimeter lens, the, uh, the varifocal lens we ship with the HD camera. Just shows you approximate uh, triangles here of what you're going to get coverage wise. So I'm going to come over to my diagram. And now that we've got a scale set, I can come back into OmniGraphle, go over to my shapes, and I can drag in a camera triangle. I usually color these triangles semi-translucent so we can see what's underneath them. So now as I start moving this camera around, I can see approximately what it's going to cover. Now keep in mind, this shows absolute coverage. Uh, doesn't account for blind spots under the camera. Uh, your blind spot's typically going to be about one and a half to two times the mounting height, depending on the downward viewing angle. But I see this camera right here. If, uh, if I move... If I move the camera uh, field of view dimensions, you can see the width and height 
variables changing accordingly. So I know like in this case, I can pull this out to about 130 feet. And depending on where I want to look at this, I can go about 240 feet away. The last thing we want to do as we lay these out is use a lens calculator wheel and just verify that the numbers we're using here, 240 uh, feet to the field of view, far into the field of view, and 130 foot width is going to work out. Um, so in this case, if I just dial this into my lens calculator real quick, which you can't see since I'm doing it with the physical wheel, uh, that tells me on a third inch sensor, which we have, I'm going to be at about 8.5 millimeters on that lens. So that would work well with our D1 cameras that have a uh, basically a 3 to 10 millimeter lens by default. And we can roughly use the same uh, lens calc parameters for the HD cameras uh, using the, the third inch image sensor size. So this is one example of how we could position a D1 camera. I can drag in another triangle. I'll color this one yellow and we'll use this as a HD camera example. So now for the HD cameras, again we can go we can go all the way out to 330 feet wide. If I can drag that out or I can come over here if I want and uh, just type in a direct number to save me some time. Now, of course, this starts to look really, uh, really wide. So again, I'm going to refer over to a lens calc wheel and just make sure that uh, the parameters I have here are going to fit with what we have for the, uh, for the lens. So if I go 330 foot approximate field of view, and this is saying the fire in the field of view is at 118 feet. You can throw this in here, 118 by... 330 shows me that on a third inch image sensor, I'm going to have about a 1.6 millimeter lens. Uh, obviously, that's not going to work with the three millimeter lens. So our options would be to narrow this down until we fall within the lens parameters or, or lengthen the depth of the field of view this way until we fall within the lens parameters. So here, if I, if I go back to lens calculator wheel, say third inch, if I want to keep my field of view to about 330 feet wide, three millimeter third inch, that tells me the far end of my field of view needs to be right around 220 feet. So I'm going to have a uh, field of view with the HD that's going to look like this. I can overlay that on that D1 camera we did and show you what you can get coverage-wise from one video IQ ICVR analytics camera HD wise uh, versus D1 camera wise. You can easily see with the HD cameras, we can usually replace about two or two and a half D1 cameras. Uh, again, if I were to sort of lay this out a little differently, covering this parking lot, if I was doing this with all D1 units, I'd probably start to end up with a layout that looks a little bit like like this here. do this real quick for demonstration purposes. You'll see too I usually leave a little bit of overlap uh, for each camera when we're trying to cover a uh, like a parking lot style area like this. So you can see here if I get to roughly the same coverage whoops with the uh, with the HD unit we're covering the equivalent of you know in this case two and a quarter cameras. Okay so I'm going to drop this HD camera out of the diagram and just show you how we would do a uh, complete this design here. Let's say we're looking for coverage of this parking lot and primary entrance locations at night. So what I'll tend to do is just take my triangles, copy and paste them, move them around uh, to show the areas that we're covering on the diagram. Try to make sure that we're getting decent coverage of the key locations you know, or whatever the customer application is going to be for any particular case. Okay. 
After I've got the cameras laid out for whatever we're trying to cover or accomplish with the given diagram, uh, I keep a little I keep a little design resources file. It's just got some templates and things that I uh, will drag and drop in. So one of them is you just like to throw a little watermark on the diagram. I also have this uh, standard disclaimer text, which basically you know, uh, notes that the views and distances are appropriate and approximate. Cameras can't see through obstructions like landscaping and other things, so those things will have to be decided on site. And makes a little notation about the blind spot of about one and a half to two times the mounting height, again, depending on camera distance and location. And then the last thing we'll usually do is I'll go around and... label each camera here this way especially if we're collaborating on this or referring back and forth over an email iterating on the design it's helpful if we know which camera each person is referring to lay those out and then just using the parameters from OmniGraph that we see up here uh, where it gives me the width and height for each individual uh, each individual camera. So camera one, this is gonna be 116 by 85 feet. Edit this here, 116 by 85. Do a quick uh, lens calc for this. Third inch, that's about a six millimeter lens setting. I'll just go around and repeat this for each of the additional cameras and so on so this gives us a nice camera count layout uh, design diagram whoops it's actually camera five shows us what we'll have here uh, what the approximate field of view will look like this also can be a handy tool for the integrators or uh, installers on site so they know where the intended locations were and a lot of customers use these tools as well just as their own internal reference so when they're when they're looking at cameras they can see what that camera was set up to uh, cover last thing i'll tend to do then is save this and then OmniGraffle has a very nice export that i can make this into a pdf we should see right here and there we go there's our PDF version of the camera layout design that we just did